I V M. So it's been another great week on I V M, where we try to get you the best podcasts that are around. This week on the Pragati Podcast, we have management and Mint columnist Karthik Sashidar, who joins Pawan and Hamsani to talk about elections and voting. On Shunya One, we have Samir Pitalwala, the founder of Culture Machine, talking about streaming content online and ad creation through tech, his journey with setting up Culture Machine. On IBM Likes, we have Abbas Janam and Naveen talking about the meme culture. On the Vishal Gundal Show, Vishal welcomes Vivek Bhargav, CEO of iProspect to Communicate, one of the foremost digital advertising companies in the country. On Keeping It Queer, Naveen interacts with queer filmmaker Pradipta Ray, who opens up about what it was like to identify as trans in a culturally affluent household. On Who's Your Mommy, we tackle the weird advice literally everyone gives to new moms. On Cyrus Says, we have Gauri Devi Dayal, an ace entrepreneur responsible for starting several awesome restaurants in Bombay. On Sonology Sonology, a unique agony ant call-in show, Sonu helps his listeners on how to potty train their dogs. It's been a great week on IVM and we hope that you can check out as many of these shows as you can. And now let me get you onto your show. You know, being a parent is tough enough, but it's even worse when you have to hear other people tell you how to do it. Especially strangers. Strangers have no qualms telling you what you're doing wrong, how you're doing it wrong and how you could be a much better parent. Not that you ask them to. Hi. I'm Veda and on this episode of Who's Your Mommy, I'll be discussing random advice from random strangers that parents get without asking. Joining me will be my friend Shruti and we are going to be talking about this stuff on the other side. See ya! Hey guys, welcome to Who's Your Mommy? I'm Veda, I'm an advertising professional and also a very very little known author. And uh, we are going to be talking about all things parenting on this show. So let's start. With me today is Shruti. Shruti is a lawyer and a working mother of two, which makes you an official superhero. Hi, everyone. And uh, today's topic is um, advice. So there is welcome advice, there is unwelcome advice, and then there is a third, even shittier kind of advice, which is advice from strangers. Shruti, have you ever been given advice as a mother from a completely unknown person? Of course. I think right from the time that you're pregnant, waiting at the clinic to meet the doctor to, I don't know, till when I think you're doing your, you know, child's bidai. <laughs> I think as a mother, you're subject to like crazy, crazy types of advice. Yeah. So, um, I, I remember after my daughter was born, we had just uh, taken her outdoors to a toy store or something like that. She was very little, okay, like not even maybe six months old. But uh, poor thing, yeah, she'd been cooped up at home the whole day. So, we took her out. And uh, while coming out of the toy store, I met this other woman who had a child with her. And she looked at me so judgily. And she's like, oh, you haven't put a hat on her, but it's so sunny. I'm like, relax, auntie. It's like five minutes walk to the car. What's wrong with you but you know this is what I mean like you don't ask for this advice there is nothing in your body language which says "Uh aha please come tell me what I should do with my child but these people just show up and they do shit like that seriously in fact I remember there was this time when I had gone to the park with my daughter when I was pregnant with my son and and this is a true story okay so hold your (laughs) breath there was this lady at the park she was a grandmom some kid's grandmom she came and she said your daughter so small you're already pregnant for a second, I was like, uh, wow. yeah, look at me, I am <laughs> pregnant. So then she's like, you know, this is the problem with you youngsters. You follow the Chinese form of reproduction and not the Indian form of reproduction. I like how this is her business, by yeah, the way. Yeah, and I'm like, what the hell? And But you know, I was so curious. I was like, okay, what does it mean? <laughs> so apparently Chinese form means that you keep having children jaldi jaldi without giving an age gap. But Indian form is when you keep four years apart. And according to her, Indian form of reproduction is what Indian women should practice. Yeah, but Indian form of reproduction is also child marriage. Though first child as f- at 15 and so obviously logically Correct. next child at so 19 I'm, and after that so, so on I'm and so like, forth. You know, what the hell? And because she's also, I think this is another problem with advice that sometimes it comes from people you can't be obviously rude to. Yeah. Like if it's some elderly auntie, somebody's grandmom, I can't be like, you know, <laughs> shut the F up. Like, are you crazy or telling me about Chinese form of reproduction, Indian form? 
it's madness see but the thing is no i mean you get a lot of advice from everybody anyway and this elderly person thing i i totally get it because if, like you said when you're pregnant you get a lot of advice from family like from random aunts whom you've never met and you know cousins whom you haven't met since you were like 3 and shit like that and they just feel totally free to tell you all these complete i don't even know where they get all these things from but they feel free to tell you and i always have these qualms at over oh, but their family you know how can i ask them to just shut that trap but i don't know why we feel that way with strangers hey, you know you are never going to meet these people again ever but still no i will be polite and yes yes please make my sex life part of your problem <laughs> like why so and especially with family you know sometimes that advice is very warranted because uh, I, i don't know i mean you've done this twice i've done this once but the first time pregnancy is sort of like appearing for the sats or the cat exam without knowing what's coming in the syllabus right i mean you can read all the baby books and watch all the shows and and get all that advice but at the end of the day every pregnancy is unique every childbirth is unique every uh, motherhood is unique so uh, you just basically they're saying oh no i don't know to do so I, at that point of time if there's someone you know is a little older who says you know hey chill relax do this if if the baby has stomach pain you can use this home remedy if you know oh that is why she's crying don't freak out she's like you know not dying or anything it's just because she's hungry or you know things like that which is i, I mean i find that kind of stuff reassuring but i think when people start giving you advice they don't know where to stop Correct. So, <laughs> I remember after my daughter was born, uh, one of my aunts very seriously took me aside, okay, and and said, "Listen, you know, your daughter is three months old. So now, when you go back to your husband, don't let him touch you." I was like, "What? <laughs> like, why am I having this conversation with you?" And then she's like, "No, you shouldn't have uh, another child really early. And you know, pregnancy makes you like uh, really attractive to your husband." I was like, "You clearly are not looking at me while you're saying <laughs> this." <laughs> because i looked like a car accident and um, she's like no no you don't you know make jokes about this just don't let him touch you and i told my husband about it later and he's like you know you really look like you have been hit by several buildings so <laughs> out of concern for you i would not do something like this but that that's what i mean right i mean it's just I, there is there is no line that is drawn where you say ki okay now now bus <laughs> now is this other don't tell me anything But yeah, that's that's family for you. Yeah, but you know, I have realized it through my experience through with both the kids, is that I have divided the kind of advice I get into two buckets. One is, if it is harmless, then I listen to it, and if it is harmless to follow, then I follow it also because yeah. I also feel mildly superstitious. Like you know, if my nanny says ki oh today at the park. Three women were staring at your son. Oh, I'll be like, "Oh God!" Then she'll say, "I'm burning five red chilies." I'm like, "Okay, okay, burn. Don't tell anybody. Just yeah, burn yeah. it." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. You know that way. But if it's something that is crazy to do, like go to uh, you know Tirupati and shave your child's head, then boss, I, I don't have the time to go there. So. it's i think that is probably the thumb rule that people should follow that if it's harmless and it makes somebody happy like i remember when i was flying for the first time with my daughter my uh, grandmom she was alive then she wanted me to put neem leaves in my bra so What? that if today people <laughs> spotted you know if i was feeding the baby on the flight so nazar nahi nazar lagegi. nahi lagega to the fact that i was feeding and i was like why will anybody put nazar on the fact that i have become a cow this is the most torturous thing that can happen to a woman and somebody is going to actually like put nazar on that mm. but theek hai to make a happy i did it how does a few neem leaves matter it's a little itchy and then after one you get used to it but you know i think that should be the thumb rule okay, okay what i can do and it is harmless i'll do but the rest no way get lost yeah but see this is my point ki with family chalo you will make that allowance Haan, ki okay correct. it's not you know but my problem is when matlab stranger ho we have never met before like you know there has been no conversation you don't know my name i don't know where you're from where do you get this sudden confidence to come and tell me bro kala dhaga bandho like <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, and I don't know if you face it, but I feel like you know, as a working mom, you are at that extra magnet of getting this unwanted advice, nay? Yeah, because are I? I mean, I know where it comes from, but seriously, it's like oh, you don't spend enough time with your child. Oh, you're out the whole day. Oh, then you must not know this. Obviously, you're a bad mother. So you know, let me step in and make your motherhood easier for you. But yeah. So after this kind of you know this is exposure to unwanted judgment plus advice bonus, uh, you know 
how do you feel because i feel uh, i mean i feel obviously I, i feel pissed off but then i also feel like you know my god i'm a horrible mother like but it's it's just a two second thought but for two seconds i'm feeling like a terrible mother and and then i feel angry because i'm feeling like a terrible mother so i'm angry at the person who's given me the advice and the judgment and i'm angry at myself for feeling you know all of this nonsense so what like what do you feel do you just like you know get like no forget it i'm i'm not going to listen to this person or what so i think all of that but what it does primarily to me is see i'm by nature a very paranoid person <laughs> okay so maybe it's because i'm a lawyer hmm. so it's my job to overthink things but basically i'm a very paranoid person and i think sometimes all this advice it feeds that paranoia because yeah. if somebody says ki acha you know your child is crying or hey maybe she has worms in her stomach hum like oh my god she has worms in her stomach she's so what is her height how long will it take for the worms to climb through her body into her brain if the worms go to her brain what will happen you know yeah. so it then tends to feed that paranoia i'm like oh my god why did i not think that yeah. she could have worms yeah. so it's i think it's it's very self destructive honestly this no so with me you know what happened was when she was uh, an infant she had colic and uh, before she had colic uh, she wasn't getting enough milk and we didn't realize that so for like 3 4 days she was just hungry and crying and we thought ah colic hai so after it was pointed out ki fyi she was hungry you know that that just kind of messed up my head completely so now if i miss anything and i'm already feeling crappy and then there is like this helpful complete stranger coming say oh by the way this is how you're supposed to do it and also fyi bad mom i know so it's it's just it feels horrible man seriously and you know after all of these episodes when i've calmed down a bit what i usually end up thinking is ki bro this should be a two way street ki theek hai you want to give me advice na ha come come give me all the advice but when i have questions you know i should be able to call you so you want to give me mothering advice you give me your phone number but like at 3 o'clock in the night i'll call you and say acha listen my baby is farting a bit so um what should i do now right and i want to be able to call these people not my mom not my pediatrician you know not my husband and just like call these people and say so you know since you told me to put a hat on my child you clearly know everything about motherhood and mm-hmm. i clearly don't give a rats ass about my child so now that she is going through you know like now that she's wetting her bed or she is not getting potty trained or whatever it is that she is doing you help me like you know you make it your life's mission to make my mothering experience awesome that is what i see as a solution to this problem as the only way these people are just going to stop giving you advice seriously you know and i don't know i think after a point you just have to realize that we are basically polite nice people you just hear from one year and take out from the other year i think that is the only solution to this problem i think you have reached a level of nirvana that is still beyond me totally should you see you need to have two kids to realize that <laughs> because by the time the second kid you're like just shut up you know like seriously i know what i'm doing it's okay if he's eating like parli ji biscuit you know nothing is going to happen let him just eat it and move on with life yeah man although that's not going to make me want to have a second child once is quite <laughs> enough thank you very much but uh, okay let's just come to the blunt question of the day which is uh, so you know like you said you take it in one year and put it out of the other but suppose you didn't have to you know suppose you were not fundamentally a polite person and or and slash or you had reached a point where you had said ki ha enough politeness now now i'm going to speak my mind and you know if someone comes to you and gives you this kind of rabid beard unasked for uncalled for advice what would you say to them i would just show them the middle finger right you just I say like that it. first fuck off i'm not interested <laughs> in this nonsense i like it you know that's i think a simple short sweet and simple that just Off. I'm not interested. This is my life. I'm going to do what I want with it. See, because I would go on the verbal barrage at this person, and I would use the kind of uh, language that no decent, well brought up, polite, sanskari Indian nari is supposed to have in her vocabulary. And I would just let it go at them. Yeah. They, it would have to happen because I, I've had it with these guys. Yeah, please. But I think at some level, now maybe some of it is well intentioned. I'm sure. So, you should just discount it i i don't know i think that's how i justify it to to basically justify my politeness that okay maybe somebody somewhere means well and that's why they're saying this no no i completely count for the good intentions they don't intend to make you feel like crap okay they just like genuinely hmm. care for the uh, happiness and security of your child whom they have no emotional connection with but the point is 
you should respect people's boundaries Correct. that's my point and Correct. it's not like i'm not guilty of thinking these things like i had gone to my cousin's uh, um uh, like son's uh, naming ceremony recently and it was like in this like ac banquet hall and that like like baby was newborn yeah and uh, he hadn't put a cap on the child's head and it was like really cold so i didn't even kind of notice this because my daughter was gallivanting everywhere and you know my 1.1 focus agenda is are let's make sure she doesn't like skip or like fall or trip or injure herself or disappear into the arms of a stranger so these are my like you talked about paranoia these are my concerns when i take her out so that's what i was occupied with but my mother because generic auntie was like listen go and tell him to put a cap on her head and i was like like i was taught right because i'm like oh no <laughs> this is i am being asked to do the things that i don't want to do <laughs> but then then i kind of made peace with it saying okay it's okay he's my cousin hmm. we are family i can say these things to him but i mean it's not like i've not seen parents like other parents new parents out and about in town and you know they are they're doing things which either i know are wrong or or are like you know different from the way i did things with my kid and i have to remind myself you know no not your business you know unless it's like genuinely harming the life and security of that child i'm going to step out of bounds and say you know bro bad parenting like here instance now fix it not going to do that man yeah in fact i don't know if you picked it up but there's this facebook group for moms right it's so you're just all about the facebook group yeah so. i'm i not anyway so on that facebook group i read something really bizarre so there was this woman who had gone to joggers park hmm. and she saw a girl playing alone in the middle near all the flowers and all and apparently she went and asked that kid that where are your parents that kid pointed saying that they are going for a run and she was very worried about the safety of the child so she was hovering around playing with her kids near the child all well intentioned because mm-hmm. she's worried and then after half an hour the dad who was basically jogging on the track came and took the kid this woman made an entire like a public discourse on what is the advice to give parents like this who leave their child in the middle and then run on a jogging track is his health more important than his daughter's safety and i'm not kidding the number of people who commented on that and i you know i don't participate i'm a bit of a troll on these things i just try to know stuff and not talk but i just couldn't help it i was like what is wrong with you people yeah. you don't know the person you don't know his circumstances you don't know anything and you guys are sitting here and judging and giving some random person advice like that is super psycho exactly see this is what i mean like you know maybe there are people with actual good intentions but then there are like people like these exactly. or just in it for the judgment ki ha baitho aur facebook par and she's like no and apparently wo facebook ne dalne se pehle she's like i gave that father a firing in joggers by saying how can you do this you're not a response i mean who the hell are you do it it's his exactly. child and so the thing is i understand that you're concerned for a, a random child and you're you know kind of telling the parent okay you probably shouldn't because it's not nice or i understand that but i mean when you're coming from this position of condescension saying i am a better parent than you and you are useless that is what gets my goat correct and i think that is the kind of advice for which you are this verbal barrage of slang <laughs> should exactly. be reserved for exactly. like dude shut up you know i know what i'm doing yeah so if any of you out there are listening and are feeling these little urges to kind of get out there and correct the behavior of parents please take it from you know two mothers we already have enough problems like we are perpetually thinking about children and work and children and house and children and children and children so galti ho jati hai yaar like once in a while you slip up it's okay but if you're going to make a big case of that or you know call it to our attention or just poke fun at us or judge us on social media which is like a complete no no by the way please like hold your horses take a deep breath and say i'm better than this yeah and for the rest of you who are uh, victims of this kind of behavior hang in there you're not alone we are all in this together <laughs> so that was the episode guys i hope you liked it uh, this is veda uh, and shruti say bye 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 and uh, oh and for those of you who have been victims of this kind of unsolicited and downright stupid advice uh, hang in there you are not alone uh, we're all in this together and we can all show them who's, who's their, their mommy, mommy. For more such awesome podcasts, check out IVM's website or download the app. New episodes out every week on the IVM podcast website, app or any place that you check out podcasts. As you can see, we have a podcast listener in his natural habitat. Millions of years of evolution have led him to this point. 
He is on his way to work and listening to podcasts makes his miserable day better. He will now head to work and use all his knowledge to communicate with other colleagues and possibly future mates. You can find more of his species on ivmpodcasts.com. Your one-stop destination where you can check out all the coolest Indian podcasts. Happy listening.